Good evening, and welcome to Lockport Township High School's Sophomore Technology Initiative Program. My name is Kim Bream, and I'm the Public Relations Director here at Lockport. I just want to take a moment to thank you for making the time to attend this evening's information session. We know your involvement in your child's education is crucial to our students' success, and we really appreciate your interest, especially during this busy holiday season. We have a great deal of information to share with you this evening, but we promise to keep our agenda concise. In just a moment, our superintendent, Dr. Wernett, will share information on our district's Anywhere, Anytime Teaching and Learning Initiative. He will be followed by Mr. Dennis Hicks, our East Campus principal, who will give more details on how that program pertains specifically to your sophomore student. Our technology director, Matt Dusterhoft, will conclude this evening with more information excuse me, with more information regarding the parent-student Chromebook agreement and demonstrate the devices for those interested. Our agenda will conclude with an opportunity to ask written questions on index cards on the table located there to my left. Please remember to include your email address or phone number so we can answer those questions. We also will host a couple of breakout sessions following our program here this evening. Uh, one will be on internet ac access and the other on Chromebook agreements for those needing more information. As many of us realize, in today's world, technology skills are critical in almost every arena, and those who are more interactive with technology have a better chance of achieving success no matter what they do after high school. It's clear today's students need to do more than just learn the concepts and skills introduced in daily instruction. They need 21st century skills, the ability to read to understand, analyze, and create using current and emerging technologies. In response, our district must embrace technology as a tool that connects students to their curriculum and learning. By strengthening students' 21st century skills and providing opportunities for real world applications of technology, we are providing our students with the skills necessary to be college and career ready. The digital divide, once seen as a factor of wealth, is now seen as a factor of education. Our district, along with our foundation, is currently looking into opportunities to help make internet access more affordable for all students. Information on free community internet access points and qualifying for Comcast Essentials program will be available during our breakout sessions after our program. At Lockport, our technology vision is based on instruction, not the device or tool. The essential question for us was not what tool to use, but rather what, when paired with the appropriate instructional strategy will be most effective for this particular learning objective. During the 2012-2013 school year, the district developed and implemented a technology framework for many pilot programs. The framework included professional development, upgrading our network infrastructure, and a tentative timeline for providing each Lockport student with a technology device. In addition, we examined our current website, included it was in need of updating as well. Our website should be easily navigated with information readily available to all interested stakeholders, including our students, parents, and staff. We recently spent time reorganizing and restructuring our current site, and soon we'll be launching a much improved website that will serve as the number one communication tool for our district. All of these components and more make up the Anywhere, Anytime Teaching and Learning Initiative here at District 205. Here to tell you more about that is our superintendent, Dr. Todd Wernett. Thank you, Mrs. Bream. I, I want to first of all just echo Mrs. Bream's comments of thanks for you giving us your time this evening. Uh, our goal is to make sure that your time is valued, answer some of your questions. In, in planning our evening this evening, we realized we had 900 sophomores, you know, and how many are going to attend and parents in that regard. Since we did advertise, we are recording it and we'll have it available on our website. But this evening, if there are a few takeaways that, that you leave us with, is first of all, as Mrs. Bream indicated, this is an instructional initiative. It's so easy to get distracted by technology and say that it's the device or it's the app or it's the tool that really the focus in the classroom. From day one, our focus has been about instruction. And so we challenged our teachers. If we provided you with technology 
different than what we currently are? How would you utilize it to enhance instruction in your classroom? And so that was the question, the essential question that drove our pilot program for the last year and a half. I'm sure some of your sons or daughters or students participated in a current pilot or one last year. And they took many different shapes and sizes. Some we focused on collaboration of students utilizing a document together to share information. Some used it as a way of researching process, analyzing data, turning it around, utilizing technology as a tool. And so again, the question then moved to our teachers, what instructional strategy will you use to maximize the use of the technology that you have? And so last year, there were many pilots that went on in our classrooms. Teachers utilized it, and they far exceeded our expectations. Because from day one, you know, technology means different things to each one of us. Some of us are plugged in as we sit here this evening. Some of us are never plugged in. We're at different places, point A and point B. So for some of our staff, they're way out in front of this. Others are just beginning. And so again, the challenge became how our teachers can move from point A to point B with the classroom instruction. Technology is not new here at Lockport Township High School. It's a part of our mission statement to effectively interact with technology as an instructional means. It just has changed, and it has changed dramatically in the last several years. It is a dynamic for education. So our Board of Education challenged the administration with the essential focus of, if we provide you with the resources to tap into technology in our classrooms, how will you maximize the opportunities for our families and students? And so that's where we've been for the last year and a half, reporting back to them, providing for them information regarding our process and progress. For all of us probably here, we still utilize textbooks in one way or another, as I did. But one of the things that really has changed with curriculum is books. Books will always be with us, and that's one of the things some students ask us or teachers ask us, are books going away? No, they are not. We know that digital curriculum, the ability to access multiple resources of a curriculum that's linked to standards, is an open source of information where a book is closed. The minute the student has it, the information that's in that book is simply locked. And so in analyzing what our teachers were utilizing in the classroom, we observed that they were using a lot of open source materials the ability to interact with museums, the inability to act, or the ability to act with Argonne National Laboratory, doing experiments, going into their archives, interactive worksheets, interactive experiments. And so there was much, much more there to offer. And so it became really a blended process. Textbooks, technology, how can we enhance the learning experience? And so again, it's not about just replicating the instruction now through digital means, but a way of enhancing instruction through the use of technology. At the same time as an organization, we realized as a high school, this was really driven from two areas to us. One, we know that our students, many of them who are not even here with us today, can probably show us as elementary and junior high students much more about technology than moms and dads know. Ask your son or daughter, and they could probably tell you. At the same time, we realize those students will be coming to us with that need and that mode of inquiry in their brains. As students leave us at the university level, we know what's required of them. The ability to interact and interface with learning management systems, where work is done with professors, collaboration is done. And so we realize we much prepare our students for the university and college level. And at the workplace. How many jobs today are, that you have are so much different now because of technology, how it's been brought to your career and to your job? And so we realize that our students must have those, that skill set. And so from that, we looked in the rearview mirror and saw how students are coming to us. We looked out the front window and saw where our students need to go as 21st century learners. And so we realized we must embrace technology, learn what we can about it. So we spent several months traveling around, going to school districts, looking at what their initiatives are, what they have done. We looked at different tools, technology tools, iPads, laptops, notebooks, Chromebooks. And we realized 
again, what best serves the needs of our population at this base in time. At the same time, we realized we could utilize cloud computing. And I know one of the things that I want to do tonight is start talking jargon for some of us who are not familiar with it. But the ability to interface with digital curriculum and utilize the cloud, free applications, to get the technology to us anywhere, anytime. So students here with wireless in the gymnasium can access during a contest or in the cafeteria during a few moments of time can do some work or possibly even on a school bus someday or in a study hall. The ability to interact, share, collaborate, learn, and if they have the ability at home, wow. And so we surveyed our families and we realized over 90% of our families have the internet at home. Our students have the ability to interface with technology and the internet when they leave us. And so we redid that survey this year at the Freshman Center, and that percentage even increased to 92%. So we know that not all our families have access to the internet, or not all our families have enough access to the internet for every family member. And so part of our pilot program is to look to ways to provide internet access to our families who are in those situations to assist with that. Now I know that the internet access for families is really a family decision at home, and we respect that. You know, so part of the challenge, again, is providing the access to the tool for the student if they wish to take it home and utilize it and maximize the benefit of it. We've also infused into our curriculum this year digital citizenship, where our students, again, are provided with the opportunity at the Freshman Center as they enter the school district about the positives and the challenges and really the dangers potentially of the internet and how it used to, has to be managed. As I know as a parent in my own household, steps and responsibilities that we discussed with our, with our children as they grew. And we realized that, so we've inserted that into our curriculum and learning. Our sophomores who begin this pilot will be receiving a, uh, a information session regarding that in which Mr. Hicks will talk about. Moving forward, we provided for you a brief introduction to our initiative. Again, visual learning, another form of technology, but uh, it'll answer some of your questions. If you're not familiar with our website, Anywhere, Anytime, Teaching and Learning, we're gonna continually update that. We have frequently asked questions there, and we'll continue to take questions through the evening. So at this time, I'm gonna pause to uh, have Mr. Dusterhoff play our video, and then be back with you in just a few minutes. LTHS District 205's technology vision is Anywhere, anytime, teaching and learning. Technology skills are critical to success in almost every arena, and those who are more interactive with technology will have additional opportunities to learn and grow. The digital divide, once seen as a factor of wealth, is now seen as a factor of education. So it really opens the doors to what we can do with them because they have access outside of the building. Today's students need to do more than just learn the concepts and skills introduced in daily instruction. Lot, I'm a lot less organized in those classes since I have like five books and six different folders. And um, in this class I have one folder and no book. So everything's just on this and it's very compact. Therefore, we must embrace technology as a tool that connects students, curriculum, and learning for anywhere, anytime, teaching and learning. It allows the students to, at their own pace, work on you know, what they feel they need the most to review over. They can differentiate for themselves. By strengthening students' 21st century skills and providing opportunities for real-world application of technology, we are providing students with the skills necessary to be college and career ready. Science always uses a lot of technology. Right now they're using new cameras that take 120 frames per second in analyzing the motion and doing things that normally used to only be done in college. I think the, the Chromebooks have Im improved my classroom from, from the standpoint that this is what the students are going to encounter in, in college a lot. This is not just going to happen overnight. Thanks to pilot programs in years past here at LTHS, we have been able to work out many of the kinks. All right, so what we're doing with Flipping the Classroom is we're turning it around so the students are watching videos of lectures at home 
and doing homework in class. That's given us about 20% more time in class to do things. But with anything new, especially with technology, there is bound to be some temporary roadblocks. And then once you get the hang of it, it's like, oh, you can come in. Teacher doesn't tell you anything. You just come in, get on, and do it, and you learn it yourself, and it's like you catch on fast. In addition to our classroom teachers who have been trained through professional development and experience, we also have a top-notch IT department working daily to keep everything running smoothly. In fact, in the summer of 2013, both buildings underwent a major rewiring to accommodate the needs for the wireless devices for years to come. Now, this may seem overwhelming, but in reality, technology evolves by the week, and everything gets smaller, sleeker, faster, and everyone and their dog knows how to use it. Facebook's harder than this, so. Which is what not only makes one-to-one -one computing possible, but inevitable. And I don't have a computer at home, so the Chromebook is like a really big resource for me. I can do work during homeroom now and get a lot more done. Instruction is still very much at the core of LTHS's technology vision, not the device or tool. That being said, the essential question for us is, what tool, when paired with the appropriate instructional strategy, will be most effective for this learning objective? The answer is... The Chromebook. It is small, compact, wireless, indestructible. Well, not that, but what it lacks in physical size, it makes up for in access, thanks to 21st century cloud computing powered by Google. In an effort to allow for a smooth transition into a full one-to-one -one district, the following will take place. January 2014. The class of 2016 will receive their Chromebooks. August 2014. The classes of 2017 and 2018 will receive their devices. August 2015. LTHS will effectively be a one-to-one -one district. Lockport Township High School is proud to be a partner with all stakeholders in this digital evolution. Well, thank you. Really, thank Mr. Crone up there. Mr. Crone, who is uh, our, our media, media specialist here at East Campus, uh, and our teachers and staff for putting that together. Uh, one, one of the things that, um, uh, and just before I introduce Mr. Hicks, is just the fa factor again of the many different pilots, you, you saw a foreign language classroom there. So students were listening to language, reciting language back off. Students were collaborating on a document, sharing technology together. And so again, it doesn't replace the teacher. It becomes part of an essential process of it that is there. Next up, we're, we're going to have Mr. Hicks come, East Campus Principal, and speak a little bit about the um, initiative here at the sophomore level here and one of the things that I'll leave you with I talked about the essential questions of the initiative but you also had an essential question to the administration and the constant challenge was look at this through the eyes of a parent we're all our parents as administrators here and what concerns are you going to see as a parent what questions are you going to have as a parent and so think that way. And so we've really tried to find as much information as we could from other school districts on what those questions would be that we had. We had a parent advisory committee a little over a year ago give us some questions and concerns that really laid the bedrock for our FAQs that are on our website. Questions that we get tonight, questions that we've received already. And so we really want your questions. We really want your concerns because this is a pilot. This is the sophomore pilot. And we really want to work those items out as we move further large scale. So again, thank you for your participation. I'll be around all evening uh, to take any questions that you would have and, and certainly entertain any thoughts you would have as well. So at this time, Mr. Dennis Six, East Campus Principal. Thanks, Dr. Warnett. Thank you for all being here tonight. This is an exciting time for all of us. As we sit here tonight, in two days on December 4th, Wednesday morning during our first period, our sophomores will meet in the East Campus Auditorium. Our guidance department will be hosting, and our presenter will be Mr. Rich Wistaki, 
a police officer, and a speaker for Will County State's Attorney. He will be presenting to all sophomores and communicating digital citizenship. And as Dr. Wernett alluded earlier, our freshman campus has the curriculum set forth for digital citizenship as all of our freshmen go forward with their curriculum during their ninth grade year. So he will be communicating with our sophomores now regarding digital citizenship as well. Yes, there are indeed responsibilities when utilizing technology. So digital citizenship is very important to us as we go forward with this endeavor. Now, a Chromebook is a device, we know that, and it should be used as an instructional tool. We understand in technology that everyone has a point A, and the hope is to reach and obtain point B for your educational goal. Here at Lockport Township High School, while using Chromebooks, this will always be an instructional initiative. We understand that everyone might have a different spot in utilizing technology as an assistive tool. In addition, we are aware that the curriculum and the delivery of the curriculum is different depending on what the objective and standard is that is being taught, whether it's in math, English, science, and for that matter, any course at Lockport Township High School. We are a Google school here at LTHS, as you are aware, and we have begun this year by implementing Haiku, our learning, man learning management system. This is also has been a very important part of our plan. The teachers and the students have communicated effectively and efficiently pertaining to our curriculum, and Haiku has been a way to collaborate not only during the school day, but also outside of the school day as well. Some of our expectations regarding the learning management system is our curriculum maps, our syllabus, all posted under the course information for each course, so that's very essential to us. The use of the calendar and posting major assignments and work such as quizzes, labs, tests, projects, and so on. Some more expectations as we continued in this first semester of school regarding posting Google Docs versus program-specific documents like Word, Excel, PowerPoints. Use calendar and daily agenda using appropriate embedded the web options, publishing how to use it and determine if something is published. Know how to rearrange all haiku pages and subpages. And as we continue after our winter break and we come back in January, when in fact our sophomores will be getting provided with a Chromebook, use, utilizing student interaction via discussion boards electronic submittal of assignments, and collaborative projects, just to name some of the expectations regarding haiku in our school district. In addition, as we prepare our students regarding our standardized testing as part of our enriched and rigorous curriculum, as we continue each year at Lockport Township High School, the park assessments will now be the focus as the Prairie State Achievement Exams, the PSAE, is in its final year. So some information about PARC. PARC represents the Partnership for Assessment of Readiness for College and Careers, P-A-R-C-C which also represents a fundamental shift in how we think about testing. PARC is based on the core belief that assessment should be a process, a tool, for enhancing teaching and learning. The PARC assessments in English, literacy, and mathematics are carefully crafted 
to give schools, teachers, students, and parents better and more useful information on how we're preparing our students for careers in college and life. Looking ahead, PARC will be a useful tool for teachers. It will be a computer-based assessment to deliver real-time information on student knowledge that teachers can use to help inf inform instruction. That's very important. Times have changed. The digital age, students' processes, and relate information differently than they did in the past, than we did in the past. It's time to prepare our students with online tools that will accelerate and enhance student learning. So we are preparing the park performance-based and end-of-the-year assessments will be ready for full implementation in the school year of 2014-2015. This means that our sophomores will be the first class to partake in this endeavor when they will be juniors next year as they sit for the park assessments. In conclusion, I'd like to reassure all of you tonight that Chromebooks are an assistive, assistive tool, excuse me, to help guide our students to learn. This is a pilot beginning with the sophomores and will continue to be a learning experience for our school and our students. I thank you for your support and we are all here to create a safe learning environment. Our digital citizenship as we go forward and now, I will also be here for questions later in the evening. I'd like to bring up and introduce Mr. Matt Dusterhoff, our Director of Technology, who is going to speak on Chromebooks and the Parent-Student Chromebook Agreement. Thank you for being here. All right, welcome. Um, <clears throat> So why the Chromebook? Uh, as it's been talked about, we have spent a number of years looking at many different devices. Uh, for a long time, we've had Windows PCs uh, in the labs. We've had laptop carts. Many of us have laptops at home and at work. We all know the struggles and pain sometimes that come with the Windows operating system. Uh, there's also a great deal of cost. <clears throat> In the last couple of years, we've also uh, examined iPads and what would that look like if we provided those for students. And we have uh, sent them home with students over the last year um, through the English classes. Students were reading books on them, doing other projects, and experiencing both the teachers and the students what that meant uh, to have a device like that. Uh, at the same time last year, we also did with some freshman students um, the Chromebooks. And even this year, we've expanded that with uh, the senior class. We have 125 of them out right now with senior students in an English class. And um, it's been very successful. So we have decided on the, the, the Chromebook as the device that we're going to use to provide to students. Um, and one of the things that helps the teachers and the students make this transition to uh, digital curriculum and, and this technology process is having the same device. Um, eventually, maybe bringing your own device and having multiple devices in the classroom might work, but right now, having one standardized device will make this whole process much, much smoother. So what is it about a, a Chromebook? Uh, it's highly functional. It, it does work like a laptop. Uh, it's got a keyboard, uh, <clears throat> unlike some of the touch tablet devices. Um, it's low cost. Uh, the particular unit that we're providing to students is $250. Uh, unit. It's low maintenance. Uh, the, Chrome, uh, the Chromebook runs Chrome browser, which is Google's browser, and in fact when you turn it on, and it really was off, um, it takes about 8 to 10 seconds for it to, to boot up and be ready to log in. Log in takes another couple seconds, and students really are ready to, to begin working. Um, and certainly with a win Windows device, that's completely unheard of. Um, it's low maintenance in that uh, it self-updates. Every two or three months, Google will release uh, an update to it. 
uh, they automatically download themselves and the next time the, the device is rebooted, it loads up <coughs> and there's very little maintenance uh, for the district or for students, uh, helping to keep costs minimum. Um, these particular devices have excellent battery life, um, somewhere in the eight hour range, fully charged. Um, and so clearly a student won't have it out and be using it for eight hours during the day They'll use it a class here and maybe a couple classes a day, but they'll have the opportunity to use it during study hall as well. So a fully charged one will last all day. Um, it's fast. So it did boot up relatively fast. Um, yeah, just making sure. Um, and it's lightweight. It, it really is uh, lightweight. <clears throat> uh, later this, this evening when we're done, I'll be over there. If people want to come by and just get a sense of what this thing is. Um, we'll also be providing your student with uh, these cases. Uh, the brand name is called Flak Jacket. Um, so they are designed to take some abuse. Um, and when you have it in there, um, and we'll, I have some available for us to take a look at, um, it really is a nice sturdy case to, to help protect the device. So we're very excited about um, being able to provide that for students. Um, so what does it mean for, for families? Well, we. Uh, we did mail home the, the letter and the agreement that we're asking everyone to sign as far as responsibilities. Um, so you all receive that. Um, and it, it is similar and it's exactly the same as <coughs> anything that this, this district provides. We provide sporting equipment for students and books. Um, and so we ask families and students to be responsible for that equipment and textbooks uh, when it's in their possession. And we're doing the same thing with the Chromebooks. Um, so, um, now, of course, it's a piece of technology, so that tends to add a little bit of concern and weight to the equation. Um, but, for example, a textbook is at least $100, <clears throat> and if a student uh, damages it in any way, they're responsible for the entire cost. Uh, a Chromebook, <clears throat> the most common piece that breaks on these, uh, especially this particular model, uh, is the screen. And to replace the screen is $50. And just to give you an, a sense of how it's uh, happened so far, I mentioned we had 125 of them out currently in the first, uh, up until today, with seniors uh, doing some English classes. And we've had three broken screens. Um, we've had a couple screens come in defective, which we replaced. But we've only had three that were truly damaged by droppage or, or carelessness. We've had no other damage whatsoever, and we've had zero theft or loss. Um, so all of them that went out to students uh, are still in students' hands, and uh, they're still being used on a regular basis in the, in the one particular English class. Um, <clears throat> so we feel very confident um, that we're in a good place with that. Um, so on our website, <clears throat> we did uh, I have uh, put a price list of all of the different things that could go wrong. Um, again, the, the monitor is the, the most common thing just because it's a, it's a bit fragile, as is with any laptop, and that was $50. But the power supply is, is $20, and again, all, the, all of that's listed on our Anytime, Anywhere teaching and learning portion of our website. Um, the district is able to make all of the repairs in-house. So there's no labor, there's no, uh, that helps keep costs down. All we're asking is that uh, families be responsible for the actual um, uh, equipment that uh, needs to be replaced. And finally, while we uh, do not endorse any one company, on the website there is a link um, to a company that will provide insurance for these devices. And there's two types of insurance that, it will, that they'll provide. Um, one is uh, sort of full coverage for any breakage. The other one is for theft and loss, any sort of uh, theft or complete destruction. Um, if the student rolls over it with their car or anything, this company really will uh, cover it. And the, the two-year cost on a $25, $25 deductible for theft and loss only was uh, $30. So for $30, it can be insured through this one particular company, and there's others out there, um, uh, for thirty dollars, and it's like a twenty-five dollar uh, deductible for that. And then, if if you choose not to have actual damage covered, then that would be uh, out of pocket as it occurred. 
Um, again, we would provide the um, labor to do all of that. Okay, um, so that is the Chromebook. Again, the agreements, we'll have extras up at the table. Um, if you don't have yours, uh, if you want to hand it in, you can hand it in today. Otherwise, uh, you could email it back in. Students can bring it in and hand it in to the cashier during the, during the school day. Um, and I think that's it. Yes. Um, and to conclude our e time this evening, uh, Mr. Kimbreen. Thank you very much. Um, again, as Dr. Burnett mentioned earlier, all of this information and more is available on our current website. On our homepage, uh, right, I think it's the first link under current news, we have a link called Anywhere, Anytime, Teaching and Learning. When you click on that link, it gives you, um, oh, thanks, Matt. It gives you some subcategories that you can choose from. So like I said, all this information that we shared with you tonight will be posted along with the video of this information session. Um, we do have a chance for you to ask questions. Like I said, we have index cards on the table there to my left. Um, please include your email address or your phone number so that we may answer those direct for you. Um, over here, I'm going to be talking about internet access. I have copies of the frequently asked questions that are on the internet today. So if anyone wants a copy of that, I have those available. I also have copies of the uh, program done by Comcast. It's called Comcast Essentials for anyone who's interested in possibly qualifying for free internet access. And I also have a list of community um, places throughout the district and where internet access is offered for free to, uh, to anyone, any patrons that go in there. So um, we do want to share that information for anyone that is interested. So please come on down and uh, see Matt or myself. And again, we thank you for your time this evening. Please have a safe drive home and have a happy holiday.